And one that I was always fascinated that you first brought up to me, and I, again, was reading in your book, but is um, plastics. As yeah. it's, I feel like the yeah. Dustin Hoff movie at the beginning. Oh, right. of the, yeah. yeah, but uh, 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 The Graduate. But um, the notion that that uh, life can make plastics in, and that'll be very useful. You can yeah. engineer life, but why, why, why don't you talk about that? For well, so plastics is, uh, I think we can do so much better than plastics, yeah, first yeah. of all. I mean, you know, uh, even when we were writing the book, I, that, that was, that particular chapter was initiated by my co-author, Ed Regis. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I sort of felt like he was emphasizing biodegradable plastics. Mm -hmm. And I actually think there's something to be said for non-degradable plastics. Yeah, you were the first person that, that <laughs> made me realize that that was probably very useful, so. Yeah, yeah so I mean, the thing is where, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we talk about, like that are s solutions to uh, climate change yeah. are really just uh, pushing things around a little bit yeah. or maybe delaying the inevitable a little bit. Yeah. But if you could sequester carbon into something useful, yeah. uh, like asphalt or, or non-degradable plastics, you could yeah. build bridges between the continents, you could build new yeah, islands. I remember you first told me bridge across the Pacific. Yeah. <laughs> build new islands. <laughs> and I bold. think I think that's uh, more interesting. Furthermore, we can make polymers that are smarter than what we normally think of yeah. as plastics. Uh, almost all of life are, bio, are polymers yeah. that are very smart. You know, yeah. they, the skin repairs itself. Yeah. Imagine if everything in the world was as good at, at skin will keep out little pathogens, you know, Things we can't even see, it will yeah. keep them out effectively. What if all of our buildings and all of our tables and chairs and everything were as smart as our skin is, or smarter, right? And almost everything in life is atomically precise. We, uh -huh. we aspire to that with our non-biological yeah. engineering. Yeah. Our, but biology is already there. It makes things atomically precise. And I th so I think the future of plastics, uh, you know, <laughs> from the graduate, yeah. is smart. Uh, infinitely complex, yeah. uh, atomically precise objects. So basically everything should have the power, just like your cell phone now has yeah. the power of a room size computer, yeah. your materials will have the power of a cell phone. Every, every little voxel, every little pixel, mm -hmm. every a little square centimeter yeah. will be like a computer was. Well, that's an ama that's, yeah. that'll be fascinating. Uh, the, and I should say, when just so that people who hadn't thought thought as quickly through this, is that the point of of non biodegradable plastics that might be useful is that, I mean, obviously the basis of plastics, like the basis of all organic life, is carbon, okay? and you can extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by by in some ways through organisms and turn it into something which is ultimately totally sequestered, which won't go back into the atmosphere. That means you, in principle, could work against the, the buildup of greenhouse gases, just so. Oh, just yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you I, unpacked it very nicely. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I'll unpack it even further, which is that the amount of photosynthesis we do every year on the planet, mm -hmm. uh, most of it occurring in the ocean with yeah. invisible organisms, yeah. is enough to take us back to pre-industrial carbon levels in the atmosphere in a few years. That's how, that's how potent our current uh, ecosystems are. And we just need to figure out where to store it. And, and yes. you, know, uh, you don't want to store it in, one proposal was to, to add iron and then have all the that's carbon so drop to the bottom of the yeah. ocean. A, that's inaccessible. B, it's gonna take a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus with them, yeah. which are, or especially the phosphorus, which is a, not really a renewable resource yeah, the yeah. way we're using it. Instead, the the tundra, so 19 million square mm -hmm. kilometers, is storing more carbon than the rest of the world put together. And it's at risk, but the, but the, right now, but the, risk. But the form is a, a, a semi-non-biodegradable polymer, which is cellulose, which is mm. in the roots that mm. go down. Most of the carbon out, out in the regular part of the world here, the non-permafrost mm. is about a meter thick, yeah. and then, it, then there's almost nothing. But there it's 500 meters thick, right? Yeah. And it's uh, this is uh, a lot of carbon, um, and it's and it's unfortunately it's it's non biodegradable while it's frozen. But it's very, very biodegradable. biodegradable, and it turns into methane, which yeah. is 28 times worse than carbon dioxide. Yeah, which is a huge, huge yeah. problem. And the the exponential, the the fact that all a lot of these problems are exponential, or at least nonlinear. That you mm -hmm. once it starts to melt, you produce more. But of mm -hmm. course, the effect of more methane is to is to make is to yep. make more melt and and yep. a and so when people think in the far future, 
things can happen very, very quickly. Yeah. And there can be a phase transition that it just, and we, and it's not clear whether, when, where the tipping point is and how close we are to it right now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it could, you know, if you, uh, re- so a lot of the methane is, is, is in a metastable form where it just can literally bubble out of yeah. the, uh, out of the ocean or the lakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could get really big bursts. And so, when we say that something's thousands of year or hundred years or fifty years away, we don't we don't have yeah. confidence there. And the and as Clint Eastwood would say, do you feel lucky, punk? You <laughs> yeah. know, it's like yeah. I don't feel that lucky yeah, about nothing. Right.